All right, so what we have here is the Derjet or FlySafe Jet F35 gear. I've taken it out, and taking this out is a bit of a pain in the butt, but uh, requires you to remove the uh, front locking cylinder, which attaches here and then onto the wood, uh, the bulkhead in the plane. And then there are one, two, three, four screws that are really difficult to get to, but can be done. Anyways, so I'm here because what I'd like to do is paint uh, my landing gear white and then I'm also gonna do the back of the the brake disc and then probably the tires as well or I might leave the tires depending on how difficult how that I'm gonna is. approach this is I'm gonna uh, clean the surface with alcohol well first I'm gonna use I have this 1500 grit just to sand it just a little bit uh, scuff up the surface get rid of it. and then once I'm done with that I'm gonna go clean that with IPA which is this guy this is 99% and then I'm going to use the self-etching automotive primer. Once that's done, I'm going to use the primer sealer. And then once that's done, we're going to hit it with uh, this automotive white enamel uh, gloss. So that's the process. We'll see how well it works out. F35 gear has been painted. Uh, so I painted the rims here. And I painted the struts and the support and I think it looks really nice. I'm gonna show you. All right, so just a quick uh, shot of how the gear comes apart. And so to release that, there was just a C-clip or an E-clip that's sitting up here that comes off. And then you push the, the metal um, sort of rod through and that comes off. And so now you have that disassembled, you have the gear kind of disassembled and then uh, here comes a more painful part. So there are four uh, screws holding the gear down. So you have two down here which you can see and there's one set up up in here and there's one all the way in the corner there so behind this. And to get to those um, I found that I needed some sort of a tool and so this is what I use. It's my Weha tool set and with this extension in here I can get uh, I can get this sort of situated on whatever screw I want to take out and once that's in get this over there and undo the screw. Okay. Other thing to mention is that the cylinder gets attached to uh, the bottom using two M3 size uh, screws so one's in the front and the other one is sort of back there it's hidden and the thing to note here is that this cylinder has one way that it likes to sit and when I take it I'll show you um, but basically you can see down here there's a side with a curve to it and the back side here is pretty much uh, straight and that's so that when the gear goes in this can sort of articulate so when putting this back together I have to keep that in mind otherwise um, it doesn't actually work as well taking off uh, the support rod which is also quite a bit painful this guy because the screws are sort of this one is clear, sort of clearly visible. If I can move back here, uh, let's see. Yeah, that guy is visible, but there's a second one that's hidden right in here under this hinge, and that's a pain to get to. But those are the two that um, we'll need to undo, and the support will come off, the gear will come off after you undo the four screws, the cylinder will come off, and then we can paint the gear. So the next thing to do is just to disassemble uh, the wheel assembly and that comes off pretty easy. There is a uh, screw in there that I gotta undo, a set screw that I gotta undo and then see that just gently slides out. In terms of the wheel, this is what the wheel looks like. Uh, there's a... Um, there's your brake assembly, you can see that's pretty dry so that rubber gasket needs to be looped because that's where the air comes in. I gotta lube that, take that out, lube that whole surface. And then you have your brake, brake, brake discs. I'll probably lube these a little bit. Um, and then your drum. And then another brake disc on the back side. Um, and then we'll lube all of that. And then I'll lube the collars in here as well just because I'm in here, might as well do some maintenance. And uh, there's the pin. So. 
Um, but first things first is this rubber gasket which sits in the groove in here. You can see the the air hole there. And uh, I'm gonna loop this up pretty good because this needs to be flexible. Um, and basically air comes into this channel here and inflates this rubber gasket which then causes the brake. So I'm just gonna put some BVM lube, get it nice and lubed, and then put it back uh, in its groove. I mean, I believe the Dirtjet manual actually uh, asks that, you know, basically calls out lubing the brake parts in in the jet. So, so there we go. Uh, and the way this fits in the in the jet in the gear is with the channel obviously facing down. So that is lubed to my satisfaction. And next thing I'm going to do is uh, lubricate the brake disc just a little bit as well. And what I find is that lubricating this also allows it to kind of stick in there. You'll see what I mean when I go to put this together. Um, you actually want things to sort of like this to stick onto there so that you can put that in the wheel. So the way this goes together is um, we get the brake disc, we get I guess the brake pad, the brake disc, and then the other brake pad. Now this brake pad has the metal side and uh, when I took the gear apart um, this side was what was facing this face and I think that makes sense so I'm just gonna put it back that way so now I just gotta insert this guy in here and it goes right through and I gotta match the grooves there we go now the grooves have been properly matched and you can see the wheel turns even though the hubs in uh, not moving so the next step is to I'm gonna set that down here um, Oh, look at that, I masked this part, so that's good. So we're gonna pull that out. That's really stuck good in there. Okay, so we didn't get paint in there, hopefully. So that's good. Um, so this wheel, the hub here, attaches through the bottom. There's a, a set screw on the top. So I loosen that all the way. And I'm gonna insert this and there's a groove in here you can see this guy and that guy is what mates to the back of the wheel right so since uh, the set screw that's going on the bottom here goes to a metal surface I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, Loctite just to give me that extra insurance uh, the blue stuff I'm gonna put a good amount of Loctite in there and then just uh, work it in. I guess I'll drop some in here too. Just like that. And then we can get that nice and tight. And then just clean it up right there. So uh, the next step will be to reinstall it. But first I'm going to just let these keep curing so I've, these have been painted and have been sitting um, for about three days uh, I'm gonna let them sit for another two days so about a full week and I think that should allow the enamel to to cure and, but that's looking um, really 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 good I think I'm gonna be working on the nose gear and so here again um, with the FlySafe jet setup we are gonna replace uh, this pneumatic gear with electrons so this is what's gonna go in there um, I'm hoping and assuming that the strut from this guy will fit just fine in here we'll figure it out but we're gonna go electric on there and then uh, that also means that these air cylinders, let's move close and really take a look at what I'm showing here. So the air cylinders that are for the gear doors, 
so there's two of them one on each side those are gonna get replaced with these tiny GDW uh, what are they DS 296x these are 8 kilogram servos at uh, 8.4 volts so that's what I'm so, gonna be thankfully uh, the shift from the pneumatic gear to the electrons that Michael ordered for me when I ordered the jet from Flysafe are is actually pretty simple so if you can see the angle of the gear is pretty much the same uh, it comes the electrons come with this pin that you put in through the back comes out the front and then you obviously have to put flat spots in it if you like whatnot put the steering servo steering arm and then put the uh, the the retract and you can see it, it's it's pretty nice so that's all there everything seems like it'll work out um, the only difference is obviously the pin the whole pattern is different I'm ready to uh, redo the gear mounts for the electric gear because as I mentioned the electron has a different bolt pattern um, and so I'm going to show how I figured out to remove these uh, so I've already removed two you can see and basically I take the uh, the screw that came with the original um, gear and you insert it into the into the blind nut and then using a hammer a claw hammer like this I just insert it there and just gently pry it back up sort of like this just very gently because you, you don't want to break uh, any of the mounts or anything you just want and you can see that came out the blind nuts are out and as you can see I've put tape on the bottom side just so it catches the epoxy and what I'm going to use to fill this is the E20NS epoxy I'm going to fill those holes and this is going to form a nice hard bond to the wood and then uh, that way when we redrill to get the new holes everything should still be nice and tight so uh, the epoxy is dry and wow well, I have sanded this down and it's very nice and smooth you can see all those holes are filled that's the top side and on the bottom side where it really is gonna matter you can see that is also pretty filled and very much flush uh, the epoxy is flush with the with the wood so I'm gonna now build up my uh, um, my extra uh, block that's gonna sit in here and raise this so, up the shim plate that I made for the nose gear is ready and as you can see I just reused the blind nuts that I used uh, that I, I guess sorry extracted from over here um, and put those on the gear um, and what I decided to do is use a plate that's let's see how many inches is that that's about uh, 0 0.38 inches thick I got this by just uh, getting two pieces of one two three ply I guess three ply so this is a six ply uh, plywood um, and that seems pretty solid um, and I think that between 0 0.38 inches and this steering rod because I'm not going to use a stock one I'm going to use this this adds another 0 0.3 inches 0 0.38 so between this and this we've pushed the nose wheel up about uh, three quarters of an inch so we'll see if that works if not we'll sort of reduce it down and the reason I count this is because the strut mounts up to this point and if you use the stock steering arm the strut has to mount all the way up to this plate which means you lose about 0 0.38 inches which is the thickness which is this guy here so because we're using that and when the gears out the struts gonna be pushed up by the size of the width of this and the width of this plate so so we'll see we'll start there as well 0.75 inches and see how the just so the nose gear paint has dried and I'm liking how that looks I have mounted it um, still questionable as to whether I'm gonna get to use this I know I said I was looking at this but uh, I may have to remove that and go back to the old steering mechanism or grind this guy down somehow um, we shall see but anyway so this is gonna go in here sort of like that and then I need to make sure the fitment works so 
yeah you can see right here that it almost doesn't want to go in yeah so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sort of hook this gear up and actuate it extend it and retract it and see if the if I can get the wheel to clear this point right here and if I can get the no, the retract to sit up right with this clearance because if not then I'm gonna have to get rid of that or grind it down or something and if I do that then I have to make this block I think a little bit thicker but we shall see so the gear mount has been uh, glued in place you can see right there and it's just uh, drying right now so I used uh, high sole uh, epoxy E20 NS you've seen that in uh, previous videos um, and that has gone in between this block of wood and this one um, as well as on the blind nuts on the top side this is what that looks like so you can kind of see that sandwich layer of epoxy right in here um, and I think that's gonna hold pretty well um, and yeah we'll wait to see how that goes I also had to widen um, see if I can show that I had to widen the hole down here a little bit so this guy right here that used to be, end like pretty much right around here I had to widen it because when you push uh, when you shim um, the gear mount um, right in here then the electron the end wants to go further down so you just have to open that up a little bit here I actually had to make some I had to clear off a little bit just uh, here in the front sorry in the back and a little bit um, in the front right here so when the doors close there's a tiny gap um, it doesn't bother me there's that there's a very tiny gap right there and a very tiny gap so in the, the gear is mounted in place and uh, it looks like it just barely clears goes down just fine locks and then comes up just fine so we have to obviously clear that a little bit as well as make some room um, back here. The clevis here just clears the, the surface. Let's see if I can turn around and show that. So you can see that it'll, it's very tight tolerance, but that's the limit of the servo. That. The servo that we're using is a Dual Sky DS8611. Um, this servo has about 18 kilograms of force at uh, 7.4 volts. So I'm going to be running this at HV, so it's going to be about 18 kilograms of force. I think that's plenty for my nose wheel right here. So here's a final uh, nose gear setup. We've got servos to open the gear doors. We got rid of the air cylinders. Um, then we have our gear. We have a Dual Sky DS8611 uh, 18 kilogram servo for steering. And then we have our electrons. Again, we got rid of the um, pneumatic gear. And then under here, you can see the the shim that I put uh, per the Dojet manual. Flysafe Jet also recommend that. Um, and so that works all well, and everything still closes really nice and tight. So here's the F35. Um, after putting the gear and raising the nose and you can see that it sits with a slightly nose up attitude um, and I hope that that's gonna be enough to get this beast off the ground the other thing that I'm gonna call out here is if you see the mains actually also have a cant to the Ford so that's also uh, gonna help with rotation so